So he finally got out of bronze. He finally looked at some videos. He finally watched my video of how to get from bronze to silver. Now you want to play with the big boys. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to climb from silver to gold. Another continuation of this mini series where I just teach you guys how to climb from one tier to another tier because it seems like you guys love this mini series. It seems like it just, I just going to help a lot of you guys out because I remember when I first started playing Overwatch, I got frustrated when I was in like gold. I got frustrated in platinum because I felt like I was so much better than other people and I could have climbed, but nobody was really teaching me so that's where I just come in and just tell you guys what I've kind of learned but also what other people have told well other people in this exact same tier now I just want to specify that I'm not like an overwatch expert that I'm still learning every single day that's why I kind of wanted to put this series off for so long because I felt like I had to get to a certain point or at least play overwatch to a certain level for you guys to at least understand where I'm coming from and to at least credit me you know again I'm not trying to say I'm the greatest overwatch player but I do feel like I can have a, f a few things I can teach you guys however with that being said I probably will have to make a second video to this well how to climb from silver to gold because there's a lot that I can give you but I don't want to overwhelm you with tips because with with my bronze to silver video I give you three basic things that you have to practice which was just basic aim mechanics understand overwatch or just understand FPS games as a whole and get good with one hero not master because there's a big difference just at least main one hero right with that, that was very basic, but that's the biggest thing with bronze players is that whenever they come to me and say, hey, Brie Rock, you know, I'm in bronze, I can't climb, what should I do? I'm going to probably tell them those three things because most bronze players have the same problem and they can easily climb from bronze to silver if they just get those three things down. With silver to gold, though, this is the thing where you just set the foundation, right? Because, well, if I just teach you a lot of this kind of stuff, there's no reason why you shouldn't have great success when you are in gold because a lot of this stuff you're going to take into gold and still take into platinum but that's why I'm telling you right now when you're in silver so not one silver player is gonna be very much alike like the other silver player where bronze players again I'm not generalizing but more or less kind of share the exact same problems but now actually getting into the tip portion of the video let's say you first were to place into silver like you literally just got out of bronze what I told you guys to get out of bronze to silver I told you guys you had to learn one of those three things now that you're in silver if you want to climb to silver to gold you have to learn all three of those things it shouldn't be that hard trust it really isn't that hard to have Basic aim mechanics down, aiming for the head, just being able just to aim well. Like, literally, this is the part where I tell you guys to get good, but it's easy to get good. You just have to practice. The second thing, just understand Overwatch. Understand that every hero has some certain role. Understand what healers have to do. Understand that when you play Mercy, you're not really meant to be a DPS Mercy, right? And the third thing is just get really good with one hero. More than likely, this is probably going to be the easiest part because you probably identified one hero that you really do like. In my case, it was May. In my case, it was Soldier Center 6. But maybe in your case, it is just one hero and that's totally fine but at this point you have to master all three of those things if you want to see some greater success but now here are the very special tips to silver players and again I just want to specify that these this is the setting foundation this is the time where whatever you learn in silver you're still gonna be practicing even if you're in diamond heck even, I'm in masters right now and I'm still practicing headshots every single day every before I even go into competitive I'm practicing every single headshot that's not a tip I want to give you but I just want to tell you guys that I'm still learning every single day but it's because because I set that foundation so early in my uh, Overwatch journey that it really did help me. But this is the time where you're starting to learn basic advanced techniques. I know that might not make sense, but I'm not going to just tell you guys like, oh, if you're on Hanamura, you have to play Genji. And then you also have to pair up a Reinhardt. Genji has to go on the No. I'm not going to be telling you guys what the pros do. I'm not going to be telling you what I do at Masters. And again, some people will discredit me because, oh, you're not in grand. D dude, okay, I'm probably higher the level than you, okay? I have a few tips I can give you, okay? But again, these, these are just very basic advanced techniques that you're not going to master, but you're just starting to learn. You're starting to appreciate. And you're starting to understand why this is so important to learn. And a perfect example of that where you just have to understand and learn is basic positioning. Knowing where you have to stand when you're defending. Knowing where you have to stand when you're attacking. Understand that the high ground is always going to be the best ground when you have to take it you know positioning is such a big thing that you don't really realize that you're doing maybe something bad because hey you're killing a bunch of people but that's the thing though you might be having this bad technique in your head and thinking that it works but that's what's going to stop you from climbing from platinum to diamond or maybe from gold to platinum again this is a video showing you guys how to climb from silver to gold but I want you guys to understand this right now so that when you are a platinum and you realize why you can't climb diamond it's because well hey you're not getting the high ground when you're ulting with soldiers so that way you can just rain havoc on everybody you know, just basic stuff like that but just understand why positioning is so important especially if you're defending on route 66 you don't want to be at their spawn because if you kill them you might be doing a lot of work you might kill four people 
they respawn right away right there. If they just luckily kill you right there, you have to walk all the way back, especially if you're playing May, especially if you're playing Symmetra. Please don't ever attack or defend at the spawn. Figure out good positioning. Look at what pros do. You don't even have to analyze what they do. Just realize, oh, they're standing on top of big Earls on Route 66 because that's a perfect place to defend and then drop that. You just, just stuff like that. Now, the second thing, it kind of goes against what I said when you want to climb from bronze to silver, and that is proper team comps. Again, I did say that you can literally play Torbjorn, you can play Mercy, you can play Symmetra, whatever the case may be, and if you understand the in and outs of that hero, you can easily climb to silver. Here, it really wouldn't be wise to play Symmetra on attack on Route 66. Why? Because that's not what Symmetra is designed for. Again, there are going to be times where, yes, maybe there is a Pharah, maybe there is a Soldier 76 on the enemy team, and if you play Reaper, clearly you're countered, but sometimes, again, this is where it's contradicting myself because I don't want to tell you guys, oh, no, you can't play that here because maybe you're really good with Reaper, but it's just understanding. It's like, okay, if you have already three DPS on your team, you might be really good with Reaper. It really doesn't call for it because that's that's not a proper team comp. It's just stuff like that. It's hard for me to say because, well, every situation is special in silver, uh, but at least I can just tell you that straight up. Like, if the, you have three DPS, another DPS like Reaper really wouldn't be called for. It's just stuff like that that you thought you were doing good in bronze, uh, but you're setting the foundation to help you just climb to that gold tier because you have to adopt the gold tier mindset, not the platinum, not the diamond, and you definitely don't want to have the same bronze mindset. You, you want to have that gold mindset because once you realize, oh, wow, a Bastion on Route 66, sometimes it can't work, but it won't work at the gold tier. That's when you adopt the gold tier mindset, baby. Now, the third thing I can give you is just understanding basic ult economy. Now, I'm not going to say, oh, well, if the enemy team used their Fire ult and they use their Zenyatta ult, then you have to understand, okay, do we have our Ryan ult? No, I'm not going to be telling you guys that. But what I am going to be telling you is when to pair up your ultimates, literally basic ult pairings and also basic ult counters because they kind of fall under two categories, well, more or less three, either one ult helps another ult and they just go in and attack or the other ult just kind of counters an enemy ult. A perfect example of a counter ult is going to be Zenyatta's ult. A perfect example of an attacking ult is like a Genji ult and a perfect example of a helping assisting ult is going to be Ana and Nano boosting. So you already you, again, this might seem very basic, but again, not every silver player will be the same because most silver players maybe will understand ult pairing but maybe some are kind of lacking that department. But just understanding that hey, if I have Nano boost, I'm going to boost the soldier. I'm going to boost the Reinhardt. I'm going to boost the Genji. But another thing that you guys have to understand that I'm even still working on, I'm going to be straight up, this is something that I'm still having to understand is when to use your counter ult, is stuff like with Zenyatta, is stuff with like Lucio, because a good cue on when to use those supporting ults is if you hear a Genji ult, or a soldier ult, or a Reaper ult, because again, that negates their ultimate and in turn helps your team live to capture the point on Nepal, or Oasis, or just anything like that. And the last and final tip kind of goes against a lot of the things that I say and preach in my videos, but I'm just being honest with myself and just being honest with you. But the fourth thing is just understanding basic counters but not necessarily switching because again, you probably are really good with Genji, you're probably really good with Mei, or you're probably really good with D.Va, and those counters might be on the field, say like a Winston, say like a Zarus, say like a Torbjorn, stuff like that, but if you understand why you're countered, it, but again, I hate saying that, oh, well, you have to switch, but the thing is though, you probably don't know every single hero, you don't know what to switch to because you don't know the whole hero cast, right? So this is where it kind of, it just comes down to you, are you willing to learn a new hero? Because more than likely you main a hero, you're probably really good with it, and maybe you have a second hero in your belt, but more than likely you don't know two or three heroes in every single category. Me for an example, I can play most healers except for Ana. For me, I can only play maybe two tanks. For me, I can play main defensive category, and in the offensive category, for the most part, I know most of the heroes, I will say that. But I'm in Masters, you're in Silver, you're not gonna know all these heroes. So if you just understand the basic concepts like, hey, I'm countered, that's probably why I'm not climbing, then you go in and try to learn a new hero that is the total opposite of, say, someone like Genji, the total opposite of someone like Mercy. Stuff like that will definitely help you. And at that point, you just have to look yourself in the mirror and decide, okay, who do I know how to play and who's a hero that would just be a great asset to any team comp? For me, that was Lucio, right? Because I knew how to play Mercy, I knew how to play Soldier 76, and I knew how to play Mei. Those were pretty standard heroes, except for Mei. That was kind of like a wild card hero, but a lot of people know how to play Mercy, and in fact, better than me. 
not a lot of uh, okay I don't want to say not a lot but not as much people know how to play Lucio when compared to Mercy so at that point that definitely helped me climb and maybe that's what you guys have to do or maybe in fact you know every healer maybe you know how to play Mercy, Ana, Zenyatta, whatever it could be at that point, you have to learn maybe a DPS here like Soldier Center 6 because there's some people in the same boat as you that are a healer main and that don't play any DPS heroes. What if you get four healer mains? Then you're not going to get enough kills and you have to get kills in Overwatch. So at that point, play a Reaper, play a Soldier, play a Genji, but then it goes back to the other tip where you just have to learn how, to, how you're countered. You know, once you learn how to just kind of expand your horizon of heroes, again, you don't have to learn every hero, but it will set the foundation and the same mentality it's like okay I don't know how to play tank like me for an example I didn't know how to play a tank and I was in diamond I learned how to play diva and now even right now diva's not the greatest tank so I have to learn how to play uh, Winston or Zarya and I'm still learning those two heroes it, you know it's just looking back at yourself and realizing what you can do because so many people like to blame other factors like oh my team sucks oh there's a Symmetra that's not doing enough or oh the Genji's not switching stuff like that but what are you doing right what are you doing to help yourself to be able to climb to the next tier just being able to learn another the hero that is helping yourself and helping your team and those are a lot of the tips that I can give you when climbing to silver to gold again there's a lot of other tips that I can give you guys and I will make a second video at this point it's like I, I skipped a lot of things that are very important at silver but I don't I just don't want to bombard you with different tips in fact maybe you already know all this stuff trust me I have a lot of other things that you guys don't know that definitely will help you to climb from silver to gold I just don't want to make this a 20 minute video I've already went over anyway guys I love you guys thank you guys so much for supporting this series Again, I'm not the perfect Overwatch player, but I feel like I've learned a lot of things that if I don't get this out on the world, a lot of people are going to get frustrated with Overwatch and want to quit the game, and that's the last thing I want you guys to do is quit just such an amazing game. So I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. More Overwatch videos to come, and bye.